Hello everybody, I'm Roxy, this is Chaotic Bibliophile, and Happy New Year! Hello, how are you doing? Welcome back to my channel. Today I bring you the first video of the year, which is kind of appropriate, you know, new year, new books, I guess. I have no excuses for myself really, except sales. Anyways, I'm kind of filming more to the right today because I spilled tea and the carpet's wet on that side. Let's just move on with the book haul. But before that, if you've noticed the title, all of the books that I'm going to haul today are hardback. Now, I've had a bit of a journey with hardcovers. At first, I loved them the first time I found out about them because they are not very usual in the Spanish-speaking world, especially not in Chile. Now with some heavier nonfiction, it is the case that you find more hard covers, but still it's definitely not the norm. And what definitely does not happen is this thing of you release first a hardcover of a fiction book and then the paperback. Maybe now some fantasy might have this, but in general, this is very rare. It's actually the other way around. Like very famous fiction might get hardcover re-releases for anniversaries, but they are not common. So hardcovers are not part of the regular market. So for me, they were something very new and you know, hardcovers are pretty when you see them on shelves. So I was very taken by them. I really love them. And then I realized how inconvenient they are because they have dust jackets. And now I've discovered of course, the power of the film, like the clear film with which you can wrap the dust jackets. But when I first encountered hardcovers, I didn't know about this. And they are heavy and you can't really hold them when you're in bed. It's very awkward. They tend to be more expensive. So I started to dislike them. And yeah, overall, I felt like they weren't worth it. And so specifically coming here, I was very aware that if I was buying a hardcover, I should probably read it right away because if not, the paper rug would come out and I would feel stupid that I paid all that money. And that has happened already. <laughs> However, it has happened that I've gotten a couple of hardbacks and I'm thinking about one book specifically that will probably make my top fiction that I bought because I wanted to read it right away and I did read it right away and I loved it and I'm so happy that I got the hardcover. I'm so glad I didn't wait is what I'm saying. Reading that book specifically and a couple of others made me realize that I still really like hardcovers because now I am looking less for something that I can transport. I have a lot of books that are small and I can take with me on the tube or, you know, if I'm queuing for something or I just need something just in case for my bag. I have lots of those, but I've been really enjoying actually having hardcovers that force me to sit down and they usually have larger print, which is very nice for your eyes. And they are really nice to highlight because says you are propping them on a table or even if I'm sitting down on my bed I still have you know a nice hard surface to write or or highlight on so I've actually been kind of falling back in love with hardcovers and again I love how they look so I've been making allowances and so the first section of this book haul are books that I encountered at the Oxfam where I volunteer they just came into my hands. By the way, I did buy them the same price that anyone would buy them. The only advantage is that we get to see them first. And so if I like something, it doesn't make it out at all. <laughs> or sometimes because I'm not there every day, sometimes I will see something while I'm tidying up and it's like, whoop, this is mine. So yeah, that's the first portion of the book haul. I am sorry for all the rambling. I just wanted to start the hardback discourse again because I know they have fallen out of grace with a lot of people and believe you me, I understand why. But I have rediscovered my love for them and I have a newfound appreciation for them. I will get to the books now. Please drop a comment down below <laughs> sharing your takes on hardcovers. I don't care if you hate them, that's fine. I won't take it personally. Do you like them? Do you not? Do you buy them? Do you not? Etc. Okay, so the first one is How to Grow a Human, Adventures in Who We Are and How We Are Made by Philip Ball. Philip Ball has written plenty of very famous pop science books like Curiosity, which I have, but I haven't read in full, but it was good. And he also wrote The Music Instinct, which of course I want to read, but because I have two of his books, I haven't 
prioritized. Nevertheless, I am super excited. This looks very, very fun. It's exactly, I suppose, what it says on the tin. Then Astrophysics for People in a Hurry by Neil deGrasse Tyson. I don't know a lot about astrophysics, so I need to read more. And I know this is like a very broad overview, but I am very excited to check it out. I already read the introduction and it's just so exciting to read. Like Neil deGrasse Tyson has such a passion for the topic and such an interest in sharing his knowledge that I just can't wait. Something very different, The Motion of the Body Through Space by Lionel Shriver. This is the sort of book that I wouldn't have bought before rediscovering my love of card covers because it is a novel and therefore I could have gotten a paperback eventually. However, I read the first page of this and I cackled. I was like, okay, I really, really want to read this novel. If you remember, We Need to Talk About Kevin was a book that I read in July and I absolutely adored. It might make my top 10. I haven't made the list yet, but that is a contender for sure. Keen to read more by her. She's just a strange human from what I've seen, but I like how she writes. An anthology, one of those chunky books that you just have to sit down to read. Writing New York, a literary anthology edited by Philip Lopate. It's spelled L-O-P-A-T-E, so pronounce that as you will. It's such a comprehensive anthology. It's not the newest one. It ends with, let me tell you, Vivian Gornick. Oh, so still like not that old. It has, for example, the iconic Goodbye to Old Dad by John Didion, May She Rest in Peace. It also has um, Tom Wolfe, Gay Talese, James Baldwin, Amiri Baraka, Mary McCarthy. It goes back a lot as well. It has Mark Twain and Walt Whitman. It starts with Washington Irving, which I think is very fitting. So, you know, I love New York and I love urban writing and reflecting upon a city. So I am very excited. I think after I'm done with my master's, I'm going to make it a project to read, I don't know, one every day or one a week. We'll see, but it, it's that kind of book. And finally, I have this gorgeous, gorgeous naked hardback, Insomnia by Marina Benjamin. This is one of those super creative, super personal essays that meet poetry and like reflection, memoir type of things that you know, if well done, I actually really love. All about insomnia. And I think I've shared a couple of times that I don't want to say used to, it's just I've gotten better <laughs> at sleeping, but insomnia has been a part of my life since I was very young. That is a very long-winded way of saying that I'm very interested in things that deal with insomnia. Actually, I found out about this book because it was translated to Spanish and I was like, oh, this sounds super interesting, but it is actually expensive because translation. I should get it in English, the original language, and I found it for super cheap and with this cover, which, uh, yeah, you can see it sparkles sparkly. It's very beautiful. The second half of this book haul is the fault of one booktuber and Christmas sales. <laughs> As you probably know, Olive from a book Olive already released her top nonfiction of 2021. Link down below. As always, her list is amazing and it's full of titles that I want to read. There was one in particular that I already wanted to read a lot, but I was waiting for the paperback because it was going to be cheaper, but she made it sound so good that I had to go get it the next day, all in by Billie Jean King with Jonette Howard and Marianne Fallers. And this is her autobiography. I've already started it. It's so fun. It's so good. I want to keep reading it all the time. I'll get back to that one in particular. I went to Foils. If you're ever in London, you have to check out Foils. It's an amazing bookshop, but it also has a cafe that I really like going to because it's a great space to work. It's very nice and open. It does get busy, but because all the tables are so far apart, it really doesn't feel like it. The food is good. It's not that expensive. It's like London price, which is expensive, I guess, in the grand scheme of things, but it's all right. And you can also have like one cup of coffee and just stay there for the whole day. Anyways, I got there when they were just opening. As they opened the doors, the salesman was saying, hey, by the way, we have a sale today and tomorrow. All hardbacks are half prize. And I literally went, oh no, 
Oh no. Oh no. Consider this me being self-controlled. My autobiography with Carson McCullers by Jen Shopland. This was another of those books that I've been meaning to read for a long time, but I was waiting for the paperback. And also I wondered whether I should read more by Carson McCullers before I read this, but I am just very impressionable when it comes to books, a podcast that I listen to, and I don't remember which ones, so I apologize about that, but one of the hostess was talking about reading this book and loving it, and this is a memoir. The author, I think, finds letters addressed to Carson McCullers, and I think the letters were from a lover, because Carson McCullers, I think, was a lesbian. And apparently something in the letters also resonates very deeply with Jen. And so it's one of those books that have become super popular where it's about the author of the memoir, but also the author they are engaging with. I've only read The Ballad of the Sad Cafe, the whole short story collection, and it's amazing. I don't really know why I haven't read more by her, but I definitely will keep reading more. I plan to read The Heart is a Lonely Hunter, but I am waiting for a secondhand copy to turn up at the auction. I already I have a okay I have a list of books if they show up they will like set aside for me it's gotten to this point I should be embarrassed but actually I am not and so that's what I'm waiting for but I might pick up another short story collection by her I don't know I don't think it will matter as much the way the hostess in the podcast talked about this made it sound so good I really wanted it of course the next book is The Art of More, How Mathematics Created Civilization by Michael Brooks. This one is one that I saw at a bookshop in Edinburgh first, and I didn't buy it because it was a hardcover, I wasn't going to read it right away, etc. I kept seeing it and almost buying it because I just need to learn more about math. I have the typical school experience of I used to be good at it, but then I had an awful teacher and I never recovered. And to this day, I say that I am terrible at math. I want to learn more. I know this is not necessarily teaching you about the math or like how to do math, but I like to approach things from a historical perspective. It does have like graphs. So there are explanations of like math. This book is absolutely beautiful and i was about to get this hardcover and all because i like this edition so much i just thought it was too beautiful <sighs> didn't want to risk the paperback being ugly or like not as beautiful and of course i'm so glad that i didn't buy it full price because i think matisse is one of the artists I like the most that I know the least about, so I'm really keen on learning more about him. Crossroads by Jonathan Franzen. If you listen to the Book Crumbles pod, link down below, as always, you will know that Danny and I talked about reading this. Or was it on our Nonfiction November TBR? Maybe it was on the Nonfiction November TBR. I will link that down below. Or maybe I cut that out. <laughs> In any case, at the beginning of 2021, we read The Corrections and we really enjoyed it. And that is my second friends and novel. I just love how he writes. This is his new one. It's supposed to be amazing. And I am really looking forward to buddy reading it with Danny. And the last book, Five Straight Lines by Andrew Gant, and the subtitle for this is A History of Music. I've read histories of music, and I know there are lots of books about the history of music, but I honestly don't think you can get enough. If the writer is good, you will always learn something new, and I really like how this is organized. Music in the ancient world, the medieval world, renaissance, baroque, classicism, the romantic century, the age of anxiety, Stockhausen and Sgt. Pepper, and the way we live now. So it is a very new book with a new take, with more info, and I am just very keen on reading the whole history of music again, seeing what this author emphasizes. So yeah, I hope this is good and I am super excited. So that was all. That was my Christmas card bag haul. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you made it this far, please give a thumbs up, please subscribe and comment. Have you read any of these books? Do you want to read any of these books? Or did you get anything for Christmas for yourself, for others or from others? Any and all comments can go down below and please remember to check out my podcasts, my social media, everything linked down below. I hope the new year is treating you well so far. See you next time. Come on guys, let's love the hardback. <laughs> I understand it's super expensive, so I don't support hardback buying in general. However, I don't know if it's 
this way in other countries but i have found in the uk they go on sale a lot that is amazing if you are like me rediscovering your love for the hardback the next book is ah oh, yes funny how i'm acting surprised is because i have them in a bag i like how half of this video is just me trying to pretend i saved money i kind of did but i also just like spent money the paradox i guess of the bargain <laughs> and sand sergeant pip and sergeant pip Ugh. sergeant paper why pip pepper 